Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Scents, coming back at you guys with another 10 fragrances every man should smell video. This one is going to be the basics part two. So I did the basics part one already back a number of months ago and those were 10 fragrances that I think anybody who's getting into collecting fragrances or trying to get a better understanding of fragrances should smell. Those are some of the beginner fragrances that everybody should know, yeah, that one, I've smelled it, I know what it smells like. And this is part two of that. So this is gonna be some more of the very obvious fragrances that I think every man should smell. So here we go, 10 fragrances every man should smell, part two, the basics. In case you haven't watched part one, there's a link in the description to that video, but these are the fragrances that were included in part one. First off, Creed Aventus. Calvin Klein, CK1. Giorgio Armani, Aqua de Jo, the original. Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mal. Dolce & Gabbana, The One, Eau de Toilette. Blue de Chanel by Chanel. Dior Fahrenheit. Dior Homme Intense. Azaro Pour Homme, which is a barbershop fragrance. And then lastly, Tom Ford, Gray Vetiver. So all of those, we're in part one. And here in part two, we're gonna go over 10 more fragrances that I feel like everybody should smell at least once. So you have a reference point if anybody talks about these fragrances. You'll know what they're talking about. You'll be able to say, oh, okay, yeah, I've smelled that one. I remember how it smelled and I did like it or I didn't like it or I liked this part of it or I didn't like that part of it, things like that. Each one of these is an important release in its own right. Now, some of these more important than others, but each one of these, in my opinion, an important release. And the first fragrance that I wanna talk about here in part two, and the first fragrance that I wanna feature here today is this one, Paco Rabanne, one million. Yes, one million. This is an enormous club fragrance that has been ever since it was released. This one came out in 2008. It's got cinnamon, leather, spices, amber. This one, very sweet very strong. The performance here is well above average, fills up a room. If you spray this too heavily, that's one of the reasons that it's a big clubbing fragrance. If you go out and there are lots of people and you've got one million on, this is gonna cut through the crowd. This is gonna get you noticed. Now, a lot of people do not like one million for those reasons, because of the power of the performance, how it's very in your face. This is not the type of fragrance that's you know, laid back. This is not the kind of fragrance that's understated. This one, it wants to make a statement. It's just really, as I said, attention grabbing, syrupy sweet. But it is a big compliment getter and younger guys have been wearing this out for over a decade now. One Million has also spawned a very popular line of fragrances, the One Million line. Uh, one Million Lucky, One Million Privé, One Million Cologne, One Million Intense. There are lots of different versions of One Million at this point, but I feel like if you're really getting into fragrances, then you should smell One Million at least once. After One Million, let's go to a Christian Dior. This one came out in 2015, though with how much coverage it's gotten since then, how much it's been talked about on forums, on Facebook, on YouTube, etc., etc., feels like it's been around for longer than that. It's this fragrance, Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. Yes, the Johnny Depp fragrance. It's got Ambroxan, Bergamot, Lavender, Sichuan Pepper, Black Pepper, uh, Pink Pepper, just a lot of different types of pepper. Sauvage, an enormous, enormous compliment getting fragrance. Also has great performance as well. Lasts a very long time, projects heavily. Dior Sauvage is essentially Christian Dior's answer to Bleu de Chanel by Chanel, of course. So this does for Dior what Bleu de Chanel does for Chanel. It gives them a blue fragrance that's extremely versatile. Wear it during the day, wear it at night, wear it casually to the office, formally, on dates, whatever. Dior Sauvage can do it. It does have kind of a metallic vibe in the opening. It's very heavy on the Ambroxan. A lot of people that are heavily into fragrance as art are not gonna like Dior Sauvage or fragrances that are similar to Dior Sauvage because this is, at its heart, just trying to be a fragrance that appeals to everyone. And it does that very well. 
Dior Sauvage is one of the most popular fragrances out on the market right now. It sells like crazy. Dior Sauvage is almost like the Aqua de Jo of today. Like when Aqua de Jo was released originally, insanely popular, everybody had it. And that's what this is like today. So everybody should smell Dior Sauvage at least once. See if you like it or not. Some people really don't, but other people absolutely swear by it. And like I said, it's a compliment monster. We're gonna change things up a bit from Dior Sauvage. The next fragrance has absolutely nothing to do with the style of fragrance that Dior Sauvage is, but I feel like it's a release that everybody should check out. It's this one, Encre Noir by Lalique. And this is the original Encre Noir. This one came out in 2006. It's got cypress, vetiver, cashmere wood, and musk as the notes. A pretty simple note breakdown. This one is the type of fragrance that you'll hear people say, oh, it's niche quality, which is to say it smells of a higher quality and it doesn't smell uh, derivative or, or boring. You can pick this up for next to nothing from discounters online. Typically, this is gonna be in the $25 range. This smells amazing in terms of, again, the quality. The cypress, the vetiver, it's dark, it's rooty, it's uh, woody, it smells fantastic. It's going to smell a little bit similar to Chanel Sycamore. So that is from the Chanel Les Exclusives line. Oh, they're more expensive private line of fragrances. And Encre Noir, I feel like, is something that everybody should smell at least once. Now, if you've only smelled really popular mainstream designer fragrances when you smell this, you might be taken aback a little bit because this is gonna hit you right away. It's gonna be like, bam, the cypress, the vetiver. It's, uh, it's pungent, but in a very good way. And that one I feel like is one that can really help kind of open doors into other fragrances for people that maybe haven't smelled things like that before. So there we go, Encre Noir. We're gonna go from one vetiver fragrance to another. And this one actually also came out in 2006, the same year as Encre Noir. Terre d'Hermes by Hermes. This one, a little bit divisive. A lot of people absolutely love this fragrance, but for some people it just doesn't work. That being said, this is extremely popular, gentlemanly, sophisticated, and uh, if it does work for you, it's an absolute stunner. Orange, vetiver, black pepper, uh, cedar, some of the notes in this fragrance. It's a little bit vegetal at times. It's earthy, kind of a dirty orange. But as I said, it's very gentlemanly. You can dress this up very easily. You can wear this formally, and it's a killer in the office as well. And for me, Terre d'Hermes has actually been quite good in terms of compliments as well. I know some people will say that Terre d'Hermes just doesn't work for them. Uh, they'll say that that earthiness throws them off, but for me, it works, works very well. And Terre d'Hermes is a classic from Hermes. At this point, it's a, a modern classic, definitely one you need to check out. From there, we're gonna head back into kind of blue fragrance territory. This one has a DNA that is everywhere. At this point, you can smell little pieces of this fragrance in so many modern men's releases that it's, it's crazy. And it's this one. Paco Rabanne Invictus, the second Paco Rabanne on this list. This one came out in 2013, and really Invictus, the original, not a fragrance that I personally like a whole lot. Now for younger guys, this is extremely popular, huge compliment puller, uh, very good performance as well, and this is gonna be one of those sort of bubblegummy sweet type fragrances, that synthetically sweet type of fragrance, but as I said, it works great if you're trying to pull attention, pull compliments. If you want to walk into a room and be noticed, this one will do that for you. It's got Ambroxan, Hideon, Bay Leaf, Grapefruit, C Notes as some of the notes in this fragrance. Uh, it was actually my brother's signature fragrance for a long time. He went through multiple bottles of this. He just absolutely loved it, my younger brother. And uh, like I said, Invictus DNA, you will smell it in so many new releases nowadays. Uh, you need to smell the original. That way, when you smell these other ones, you can be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've smelled that before. I, I've smelled that in the original Invictus. From there, we're gonna go to a 2004 release. This one was really big in the clubs when it came out, still popular today. It's this one, Armani Code. And this line of fragrances has lots of just 
killer fragrances that have come out over the past few years. Code Profumo, Code Absolute, Code Absolute Gold, and before that, Code Ultimate. You've also got a couple of kind of stragglers out there like Code Colonia, Code A-List, but Armani Code set that all into motion. Leather, Star Anise, uh, Tonka, and Tobacco are some of the notes on this fragrance. This one, dark, sweet, uh, again, like a lot of the fragrances in this list, attention grabbing, compliment pulling, it has stood the test of time. This has been out for 16 years now. Doesn't feel like it, but 16 years. And if you're really into those modern takes on the code DNA, I feel like you should definitely check out the original, see where it all started. And you may find that that one, Armani Code from 2004, works for you just as well as some of these new ones. Next up is a fragrance that was originally released in 1994. Then it was re-released in 2012. A lot of people are gonna tell you that the original from 1994 is the only one that you should go after. You should not even mess with the 2012 re-release, blah, 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 blah. Now, the original from 94, if you can find that, it is better, but is it worth paying an enormous markup from the 2012 version to get the 1994 version? Probably not for 99% of you out there. The fragrance I'm talking about is this one, Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. One other thing about that, the whole 94, 2012 thing, if you get Dolce & Gabbana Intenso, that one is gonna be a little bit more similar to the original release of Pour Homme. So if you wanted to, kind of like as a discount version of that fragrance, you could get Intenso and get a little bit closer to the original release of Pour Homme if you wanted. It's got lavender, citrus, tobacco, and sage. This one, very gentlemanly. It does come across more for somebody in their mid to late 20s and up. This does not come across like a fragrance that a teenager would wanna wear or somebody that's like 21, 22. Uh, it's not that style of fragrance. This is not the kind of fragrance that's gonna hit you with a whole lot of sweetness. And while this is a tobacco fragrance, there's a little bit of a, like a cleanliness to it. Not necessarily barbershoppy, but close. It starts to get close to the barbershop side of things while retaining that tobacco edge. So you've got that lavender and sage in here. That's gonna give you some of that cleanliness. The tobacco here comes across more like a dry tobacco leaf to me, not like a really sweet pipe tobacco or anything like that. A little bit of citrus splashed on top in the opening. It's a classic masculine scent to me, Dolce & Gabbana, Pour Homme. I think that you should definitely check this one out at least once. Uh, Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme Light Blue as well. You could probably put that one in here, but between those two fragrances, I'd rather wear this one. Next up is a fragrance that everybody definitely needs to smell. This is one that uh, realistically is a, an extremely safe blind buy, huge compliment puller. Of course, I'm talking about Secretions Magnifique. I, I'm, I'm full of it. Don't blind buy this. This is actually not one of the fragrances in the list. I was just trolling you guys. If, if you don't know what this is, you can look it up, but uh, it's got some some notes in there that you don't want to smell like bodily fluids. We'll just leave it at that, bodily fluids. Next up on this list, an actual serious entry in the list. This one came out in 2007, part of the Tom Ford Private Blend collection. I think that from the Private Blend line, if they were only going to be one that you could smell and use it as a reference point for other things, this is probably your best bet. It's this one, Tuscan Leather. Now there are some fantastic fragrances in the Private Blend line, lots of them actually. And I'll feature some of those on later videos in this 10 Fragrances Every Man Should Smell series, but first one I wanted to highlight is this one. This has leather, raspberry, saffron, and woody notes as some of the notes in the fragrance. And this is one of the most popular leather fragrances on the market. Period. This has been the inspiration for countless other fragrances, especially niche fragrances. Uh, it seems like, you know, half the niche houses out there have their version or their take on Tuscan leather, but this is the OG. It has that leather note sweetened by raspberry. It just smells fantastic. I still think that this is an amazing fragrance. I still do bust this out from time to time, especially in fall and winter. It's got great performance, projects, it lasts. Tom Ford did come out with Ombre Leather 16 and then after that Ombre Leather, which has similarities to Tuscan Leather. But again, this one's the OG. 
It is going to be more expensive than the other fragrances on this list since it is part of the private blend collection, but this is one I feel like everybody should smell. And there are others in the private blend line that I think everybody should smell, like Tobacco Vani, Oud Wood, and uh, Neroli Portofino, and a few others, but I wanted to highlight this one first. Next up, a fragrance from Yves Saint Laurent. It is one of their most hyped fragrances over the past, call it five, six years. So you probably already know what this one is. La Nuit de Lhomme. This one originally came out in 2009. It's got cardamom, it's got bergamot, lavender, cedar. Obviously of those notes, what it's most well known for, the cardamom. If you tell or ask anybody out there rather, what is the most prominent cardamom fragrance on the market, period. A lot of people, the majority I would say, will say La Nuit de Lhomme. That is the most popular, most well-known cardamom centric fragrance on the market. Sweet, a little bit spicy, sexy, aromatic. This one, a killer date night fragrance. And a lot of you guys probably already know that because La Nuit de Lhomme has been talked about and talked about and talked about and hyped and put into top 10 lists, best date night lists, all that stuff. And here it is again with 10 fragrances every man should smell, the basics, La Nuit de Lhomme. You could also feature Yves Saint Laurent Lhomme, and that would work as well, but I feel like that's probably the one that most guys who are just getting into things are gonna gravitate toward first, La Nuit. And that's gonna take us to the last fragrance on this list. It is from Victor and Rolf, came out in 2012. Spice Bomb. Now to be clear here, I think that Spice Bomb Extreme is an overall better fragrance than Spice Bomb, but this is the original, the first one in the Spice Bomb line, so that's why it's featured here. Cinnamon, pink pepper, leather, tobacco, saffron, some of the notes in this fragrance. This is, as I said, from Victor and Rolf, which means essentially you're never going to find this for a really good price at discounters. Uh, it seems like Victor and Rolf fragrances, you're gonna still pay 80 bucks <laughs> for their fragrances, even at places like Fragrance Net or Fragrance X. This one also has a similarity to Bulgari Man in Black, which came after Spice Bomb. Man in Black is a fragrance that you can pick up a lot cheaper than Spice Bomb, uh, but again, Spice Bomb came first. This is going to be a big blast of spice, which the name of the fragrance should give that away, right? As it dries down, you're gonna get tobacco and leather in there as well, very masculine fragrance. And even though it has that really pungent, big blast of spice, along with the tobacco, along with the leather, it is still a big compliment pulling fragrance. So it does it in a way that's extremely mass appealing and safe. Performance on that one also very, very good. Uh, it's gonna last a very long time. It's going to project heavily. It's one of those fragrances that you don't really have to go with too many sprays uh, because you're getting that really good performance. And the original Spice Bomb and Spice Bomb Extreme, the one I mentioned just a second ago, are two fragrances that are just staples in cool weather. So fall, winter, Spice Bomb, Spice Bomb Extreme, just absolutely kill it. Then you have Spice Bomb Eau Fraiche or Spice Bomb Fresh, which is better for springtime, and Spice Bomb Night Vision, which exists. And that is going to wrap up these 10 fragrances every man should smell, the basics, part two. I'm going to try to do another one of these videos before too long, but I don't want to do them like back to back to back to back. So uh, we'll see. Maybe a few weeks I can get to it again and do part three. As always, guys, thanks so much for all of your support. I appreciate it so much. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.